they're in court in the EU. Yeah. Fighting it out. You know, they should just bring out those Rock'em Sock'em little robot things and be like, look, this is how we're going to solve this. And then you just, whoever's head pops up first loses, and then that's the... I haven't examined this very closely, but there was a couple of reports in um, FOSS patents that uh, Sony traveled to Seattle. Did we talk about this? Yeah, a little bit, but it's... We did, okay. Yeah. It's interesting. Well, I mean, i suggesting they're talking, you know? Yeah, maybe. Well, I mean... Or they just showed up to stand outside their door and say, we're not talking, and then (laughs) took their private jets home or wherever they go. I hope that's what it is. (laughs) It's just holding up a meat board, you know, First just sitting out the in the front board. lawn and says, nope. Yeah. So anyways, yeah. Uh, Microsoft, along the same lines, timing is completely coincidental that they announced that they have signed a deal with Nintendo for 10 years. This is going to be assuming that they actually close this acquisition that says, mm-hmm. hey, we'll bring it to Nintendo. Yeah. What does that mean, do you think? I don't bring think it, it means to Switch. Nintendo? I think it means whatever they're yeah. next. Yeah, okay console is yeah there seems to be some consensus that the switch is not powerful enough to handle call of duty i mean the only way it could work on the switch would be cloud gaming like that's that's the Mm -hmm. only potential way but yep yep that could be it yeah so we got that that'll happen yeah the thing that the only thing that well there's a lot of things but i think april 11th is the day that they have that the eu will like say yes or no unless they you know delay it or whatever yeah uh but the one thing we don't know, which I'm sure will come out after today, is what... Mm-hmm. So the EU went to Microsoft and said, you got to do... We have issues with these things. And Microsoft right now is saying what they're going to do about those things. And we don't know what these and those things are. Yeah. So. This is not like a public forum, right? This is a... No, but this stuff will all surface. I mean, it all Yeah, no, I know that. But I mean, we're not going to find out today, like, probably. No. Well, unless there's somebody, like, sitting there and writing it yeah. all. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, that's what I... Yeah, I'm not sure what... Yeah, okay. Maybe it happens in public. All right. Well, we'll find out. Yeah, we will. We will also find out what Teams 2.0 is, which apparently is a rewrite yeah, I, of the client. Somebody told me about that over the weekend, and I didn't even think to write it up. <laughs> I'm a little distracted, by the way. We're selling our house, so we had that all weekend. I, 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 I'm just a freaking mess right now. So anyway, um, but yeah, I, I, I a source... <laughs> Uh, let's just say in that organization told me about teams 2.0 about the March date. It is two 2.0. It's not 2.0. It's, it's 2.0. That's what they call it. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, smaller, lighter, faster, better, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah. Um, I, somebody on, uh, Twitter this morning pointed out something, um, just kind of, Oh yeah. Something really basic about teams, which is when you, bring up the app, there isn't the capability for it to adapt to whatever light or dark mode you have. You have yep. to choose a mode, right? Uh, which is kind of goofy because that capability is built in. It's really easy to do. Uh, why Why would it be that unsophisticated? To which I responded, I don't know. Why does every time I reboot my computer and Teams comes up automatically, it's skewed off down into the corner and it's like some weird size and it's not where it was when I where I left it or the size I left it. Like, this is an application that... Um, is super important to Microsoft. It's like the biggest platform they've created in a long, long time. And the actual app that we use on Windows, inexplicably, it's not just big and heavy and electronic or whatever. It's mm. like it's really unsophisticated. I mean, given how important this thing is to Microsoft. Um, well, you kind of got to remember, too, th- this app was built by the midnight oil like remember how scared yeah. they were of slack and everything yeah. and they like yeah. they didn't sit there i mean they properly planned teams because obviously it's stuck yep. around but i mean this wasn't something that was just burst and it had its nice time yeah. coming to mark like they rammed this out the door no fair I, fair and I, I i will say uh there's probably parallels here to maybe to internet explorer how they mm-hmm. took the spyglass thing and just you know added a few things to it and proved it over time and then at some point you have to re-architect it or whatever and um, maybe that is what we're seeing it's it's okay it's just it's just weird how there are just really basic ui things that don't it's like the new paint doesn't support dark mode but the new Mm -hmm. notepad does and it's like guys what you got I, i don't understand the inconsistency and i don't understand I don't understand a lot, Brad. I think it's what I'm trying to say. I don't know. It just seems obvious to me. You do the basics. Yeah. Well, we'll see. Uh, 
we'll see yeah. how it is. I mean, that's kind of the hope that it's. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I will point out, this is somewhat of a side. So yeah. your issue with it just showing up wherever. Yeah. Like that is <laughs> an actually a very compu hard computer science problem. Uh, and I can't, I can't look at it from um, Microsoft's perspective because here, here's a very real example from Stardock. Yeah. So we have a product called Fences. It's hugely pop popular. You have mm -hmm. multiple monitors and you pin something to effectively the desktop with a fence. Mm -hmm. And we run into an issue where right now I'm on a single monitor. Mm -hmm. But let's say I have a dual monitor device. Well, it's it's a real sensitive timing issue. So you reboot, you have a dual screen device and you have you have fences on one monitor and the other. Mm -hmm. Windows doesn't always consistently say when that other monitor is connected yeah, to the device. Right, right. And so knowing can we put a fence on that device at boot up during login is a actually pretty difficult. Now granted, we're a third party working yep. around a lot of things. We're not Microsoft with the actual OS, but you can think of all the scenarios where you don't know if a monitor is attached. You can look at like docs, you can look at reboot right. scenarios, you can look at when you just go back there and unplug it. And then it's like, what do you do in those scenarios? But um, so, yeah. all right, I, I, that's a that's a slightly different problem, right? So yes, it is a slightly um, different problem. Tangibly, I'll, I'll just say this: I, having written some basic apps, I, this is something you confront. Like in other words, one of the settings you want to save when you have an application is the person sizes it to whatever dimensions. Mm -hmm. They push it up into some corner of the screen, and they close it. Yep. You want it to come back and be that way, and you're like, okay, and actually. That's not hard to do. Correct. Now, I'm talking about a single display here, too, yes. so whatever. But that that kind of – that's built in. Like this is all of the – any app framework made since 2001 or whatever has this capability. You can do this. Um, but then there are these – this like you have to be – you have to really think through this a little bit. Like so, for example, if the person maximizes the window, closes it, and then brings it back, if you just do what I just said, what will happen is that app will appear in the – size and shape of the full screen minus the taskbar, but it will not be maximized. Mm -hmm. That's a different thing you have to look at, right? So that's a state. You know, you can look for maximized state, um, and you can do that. And I've done this. Like, I know how to write – I know how to do this, right? So I, I know this is possible, and I know how to do it. But the interesting thing is the two apps that I use that don't do this right are Teams and Notion. And Notion, um, if I have that thing yeah. full, uh, maximized, will we'll come back windowed, but in the space of that yep. thing. Both of those apps are almost certainly written with web technology. Well, are written, you know, I'm sure are, and in the case of Notion, I'm sure. And it wouldn't surprise me to discover that they are, in fact, both written with exactly the same thing, and that mm -hmm. that might be tied to the problem, right? That there's some missing bit that, that's not available to that, whatever they use, React Native or Electron or whatever it is. Um, so there, there's that. I mean, uh, you know, Multimon, that adds a whole new, new layer of, stupidity and I, I guess for applications you probably rely on windows now because windows has gotten a little more sophisticated just for positioning the window so when it detects yep. that the second window or monitors there it will move the thing over or whatever but i got it. it's just yeah, it's a nightmare i i don't know <laughs> especially you know you're not just creating applications you're creating like integrations with the os mm -hmm. i mean I, I i don't the the sheer number of permutations oh it's I just can't even, I can't even imagine, you know. It becomes a nightmare scenario. And I'm talking way above what I, even my knowledge is, but yeah, even just where the monitor is positioned depends on the mm -hmm. grid coordinates. And we, we run into edge cases where somebody will move a monitor, mm -hmm. like physically move the, mo and like the edge cases are endless and we're only a small developer in a very, very, very large pond. And I can yep. imagine Microsoft's edge cases are a little bit more edgy than ours. <laughs> that's why they named it. Yeah, it's, it's, that's why they called it. Uh, so, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Microsoft loves to hear your feedback. So, you know, <laughs> make sure to what is it? Control H is that what? Or uh, Windows key H? Report there. Well, someone will get right on it. But you know what they should do is port File Explorer to WinApp SDK because that is what's going to solve our problems, Paul Thurot. So. I, th I feel like we might have briefly touched. I think, in fact, I'm sure we did. So since then, I wrote something about it. I also talked to Raphael, which I'm sure you have as well. Mm -hmm. And um, I have a better understanding of this. I also watched that entire, you know, yeah. whatever it was, community call thing, just to kind of get a better handle on what's happening there. Um, oh, and I've also started playing around with the Windows app SDK, which, by the way, is a dumpster fire. It's just unbelievable. But Shocking. okay, whatever. So 
I, th I think what I said but when we talked about this before is almost exactly right. Like they basically just ran into these limitations. In fact, they ba they said literally that XAML Islands w is such a nightmare, which is the way you, you would do this with a traditional app, bringing WinUI 3 to like an existing desktop app, that they had to uh, modify it for in-house use, and now they're moving off of it. <laughs> so it, it, that's basically what I said. Like I, it's kind of amazing that's exactly what they're doing. But um, I would expect that we're going to see – more apps that were inbox UWP transition to this mm -hmm. um, Windows app SDK, right? Because there is a migration path there. There's also, and this is something you'd be familiar with just through Stardock and stuff, is Microsoft has these like um, kind of standard app types. And like mm -hmm. a lot of the apps in Windows 11 now are navigation based, where there's a navigation bar on the left, like yep. um, the, the, what do you call it, media player app is like this. A lot of apps are like this. And um, you can see old school like Windows 10 apps still around. You can even see vestiges of Windows 8X, whatever. Back then, remember, you know, we had those kind of um, like hub-like apps. I forget what they call mm -hmm. them, like a scrolling whatever app sideways, horizontally scrolling. You know, they moved off that. Um, now it's, you know, hamburger menu was a thing for a while. And we sort of yep. still have that in navigation. But it's 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 becoming like a – so anyway, I'm sorry. The, the Media Player app is a new style Windows 11 app, WinUI. Movies and TV is an old style Windows 10 style app, whatever they called it. And that's one that hasn't made the transition yet, right? But it will. I mean, there's no doubt about it. Um, and we'll see what happens there because that app and Media Player both support local video files for some reason. And my suspicion, and I think they might have said this, is that that's going to go away from movies and TV. In fact, frankly, movies and TV should go away. But yeah. <clears throat> You know, whatever. Anyway, there's a whole thing going on. So I, I I sort of appreciate them trying to bring WinUI out into the world. It looks those apps look nice, you mm -hmm. know. But developing for that is awful. And if you have an existing code base, which is like ninety nine point something percent of the yeah. anyone wanting to use this, it's not good. Unless you are on UWP, in which case it's easy. Uh, well, easier. Yeah, but we've like already that. established ninety nine percent of That's right. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, the math the math on this is not good. So that but that's the that's the story today, you know. Mm hmm What do you do? I I don't know, you could pay Meta for some account verification, <laughs> yeah, nothing right. else. Yeah, just use the web app, it's what you do.